Again, okay, welcome back to another episode of Scumbaggers. Welcome Cowboy. back, everybody. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this one. We got a we got a friend of mine, John Mostyn, to come on. Really, really funny comedian. You're, you're mostly stand up, I would say, right? Yeah, yeah that's kind of yeah. your thing. Also, did go to Humber. Got a lot of Humber grads Humber on here. Forever. Yeah, which is funny. Uh, I got mixed up even talking to Brad last episode, being like, "Yeah, me and John are the same year," and he was like. I don't think you guys were. And I was like, yes, we were. And then I was like, oh, no, you we auditioned together. No. You yeah. didn't get to come that year, and then you came the year after. You know, you know what happened? I was very hungover for that audition. I'd been drinking heavily the night before. Yeah. And then I, uh, I didn't go. I went back to Scotland, actually, because I couldn't afford I was trying to go to Humber to stay in the country. Yeah. And I couldn't afford. I was out of a visa. I couldn't yeah. afford to go. Yeah. So I just went. I, that's why I wasn't in New Year because yeah. I ended up going back home for a few months. Well, I remember thinking that to myself. I was like, that guy was kind of funny. I liked him. I was like, I can't. I remember thinking to myself, I can't believe he didn't make it over these other people that I was in the in the class with. I was like, I was like, that's crazy. Why did you cut like of him of all? Because that was just my initial instinct. I was like, oh, other people don't have problems where their visas expire and they got to pay for shit and like figure out their lives i'm like he was just another kid from around here that's trying to go to school but i'm curious to see that people that don't get in the people not getting because like the, the bar is very I, low uh, the bar is very low i i imagine <laughs> i imagine it, like the vast majority of people do get in but you i feel at some point you got to make some cuts depends on what year too Dep- depends on how many people apply like at some point you probably go we can't have this many kids in here we can't they always start off with like 60 people in first year mm-hmm. and then by the by the time everyone like Figures graduates yeah. there's maybe like 15 and then people that actually make a career out of it there's maybe like three and they're usually <laughs> and they're usually the ones that dropped out after first year yeah yeah <laughs> they're usually yeah. Uh, but our year was was significantly different in that in that regard for some reason most of us stuck through with it like yeah. our year was like very bizarre in that regard we had like probably almost 60 people graduate technically really yeah we only lost like four or five kids I don't think like, anyone in my year is still doing stand up outside maybe Juliana Rodriguez. Yeah. Brad's doing it a little bit Brad's in the UK. Erica Ayla. Not many. Yeah. Not no, not a whole no, no, apart from Nima, he's killing it. Nima's crushing Jesus it right Christ. now. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, he's got a ridiculous following. You yeah. need to get him on the podcast. I know, I know. I'll, me- I'll message him, but he's tough to get a hold of. I mean, he's you know he's always go- going around d- doing different things. He's he's tough to even get a response from fucking Nima. But I, I should, but I don't know if this is uh the kind of podcast he wants associated with him, no. you know. Yeah. <laughs> we are a little racy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Um, but anyways, man, yeah, yeah. So you've been you've been enjoying the city, doing stand up. Obviously, with everything closed now, you're running a, a pie, a vegan yes. pie company yes, now. Yes, oh, yes. That's pretty cool. At the Pie Lander on yeah. uh, Instagram for anyone. Follow them right now. Yeah. Uh, I'll deliver it to your door within reason. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. We're gonna get people. You're gonna get calls from people back home in Sarnia going, "Give me Sarnia. some of them fucking pies." <laughs> no thanks. I don't, yeah. know Sarnia. I don't know where Sarnia yeah. is, but it doesn't sound like a place I want to go. Oh, it's not. <laughs> it's not, my friend. Chemical Valley. Follow the smell. Yeah. Well, chemical like chemicals. You taking chemicals or? Well, that too. But it, <laughs> yeah. Chemical Valley because we're we're all gas and oil uh, processing plants uh, okay, and sh- okay, and shit yeah. like that. Right. I read this really uh, concerning thing. It was if there was ever like a major terrorist attack on Canada, right, they, would hit, they would hit Chemical Valley because it would have the largest blast radius. It would reach as far as Toronto when it hit the states as well. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, and it would just fuck up everything because yeah. so much of the like rubber tires, big time, all kinds of stuff is made mm-hmm. in Sarnia. Yeah. So what you're saying is terrorists, if you're listening, <laughs> Sarnia, Sarnia, Ontario, right across the border <laughs> from Port Huron. Uh, make sure you take out Bayside Mall. That one hey, is the worst. Don't wreck the new Taco Bell. We've been waiting for that <laughs> yeah, for, years, for years, okay? Uh, um, so how long have you been in the country now, John? Like, um, Actually, in January, this coming January, it'll be 10 years. 10 years? A decade. Oh, man. Yeah. So you didn't... Cause you, so you were already in the country prior to the program a little bit. Yes, I'd yeah. been here, uh, I think, four years. So I was here on a... I came to, to Toronto for a, on a one-year working holiday visa. Mm-hmm. With the intention of staying for one year, and then going home, yeah. and then I stayed for one other year, and then by the end of that year, I I didn't have any visa options left, so I was here just like for a couple of years, just floating around, mm-hmm. and then that's why I went to Humber to get a visa to stay here. Right, Hopefully, right. no one from immigration is watching this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, just well, we stuff. did just talk about Bayside Mall, which is all government offices. Right? Yeah. So that's their whole thing. Telling people to blow it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'd been here four years, and then went home briefly. Got some money together, came back, did the Humber course, did that for two years. Then they give you a three-year work visa Yeah. after you uh, graduate college. And then that comes to an end. I just applied for permanent residency, which I'm getting the decision on next month. 
Next month? Okay. So, so this is a decade long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> days left in the country. Well, can I ask you, uh, just like, why Canada? Why, like, well, was there a, a thought process behind that? Or were no. you just like, fuck it, I'm going somewhere and this is, um, just happens to be the well, place? Well, it was more, I didn't know anything about Canada. I'd been to Australia and there's only so many places that give you like working holiday visas that right. Britain has an agreement with. Australia, New Zealand, Canada. I think that's it. Um, and I've been to Australia I didn't really, I didn't really care to go to New Zealand now, but with coronavirus, I wish I had because they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. they had it immediately. Like, yeah, yeah. But um, and then uh, the reason why I went to Canada was uh, I went to Toronto specifically is because it was the cheapest flight from Glasgow, <laughs> and that's that's it. the only reason why I'm in Toronto was it's the cheapest, yeah. quickest flight. Because my my thought was I'll go to Toronto. And then I'll just take it from there. Yeah, yeah. And I never left. Yeah. And I've never really been <laughs> yeah. much further than Toronto. To yeah, be yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's that's what I was wondering. I was like, because I, I, I kind of assumed that that would have been the case. But I was like, well, I'm, now I'm curious to see if there ever ever was like a really specific thought. No. Plan People always it. ask me and yeah. I always feel like they're disappointed that I don't have like some <laughs> beautiful story about, yeah, about Toronto. following <laughs> my dreams of like, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I listened to Nickelback's first yeah. album. Yeah. I'm like, I yeah. gotta go there. I gotta go there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta check this place out. No, I didn't, I didn't know anything about Canada. Yeah. Not one thing. I didn't. I only know th- things like like because no one knows anything about Canada yeah. outside of uh, Canada. Canadians. Like, yeah. like I, I didn't know what who the tragically hip were. You know, Tim Hortons. Yeah. None of that shit, yeah. right? Yeah. And you only know like Bieber, Avril Lavigne, mm. like this shit that people hate here, right? Yeah. And uh, I thought also thought that Canada was an incredibly cheap place to live. And I turned up here at $1,000. Boy, uh, were you wrong. I was wrong. I was like, after two weeks, I ran out of money. Yeah. <laughs> that's two how they weeks, get you. They're like, we'll, yeah, they're like, we'll get them with the cheap flights and then fucking gouge them with rent. Yeah. 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 I paid yeah. rent for one month. I couldn't even do first and last. I yeah. gave the guy one month up front and then I was broke. Yeah. The uh, what? Yeah. And I almost left after two weeks because I was almost <laughs> out of money. And I had just enough for a flight home one way. And yeah. I was like, I couldn't get a job. Yeah. Didn't know anyone. And I was like, I'm going home. And I remember this very clearly. I was walking up Church Street downtown from yeah. Queen up to church. Someone called me and it was like, oh, we're from uh, Bell. We're looking for like call center agents. Yeah. For, and I was like, I don't really want to do like call center work. But they were like, it's two weeks paid training. And I was like, well, you know what? Two I weeks, fight, I'm getting yeah. two weeks of wages. I don't need to do an actual job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Maybe something else happens. Maybe, yeah. Dude, that's a and, great idea. And then man. I thought to myself, well, maybe... Because there's a big call center community, uh, community uh, uh, like there's a uh, yeah, call, call center, center community. Yeah. The scene. No, no in, in Glasgow, there's a lot of call centers in Glasgow, yeah. right? So a lot of people work in call centers. So I thought it would be the same. Mm-hmm. And I thought maybe I'll meet some people yeah, and then take it from there. But I, yeah, I, met, I ended up meeting a couple of people and then just gradually. But yeah, I was on my way. I was literally on my way to book a flight home after two weeks because I came here in January. Yeah. It was fucking snowing. Oh, yeah. And I thought I thought that because in Glasgow and in, in Britain as well, it's like, in the city centers of every every city is where everything is. That's where everyone lives. Mm. That's where all the jobs are. Right. That's where all the stuff is. So I went, I thought that was the same in yeah. uh, uh, Toronto. I went downtown in the financial district yeah. and I'm like, <laughs> I'm walking about and it's like minus 25 and I'm like, where is everyone? <laughs> Where's the bars yeah. and where's the things? What the fuck is going on? And buddy? I was just like, this town sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just... <laughs> well, there you have it. Bell cares about its immigrants, okay? So yeah, yeah. It was all immigrants, yeah. man. I was like, yeah. it, was, it was like oh, the no only doubt. job for like, everyone had just arrived in the country. It was just like, <laughs> They're all well, getting their two weeks paid. You know, pretty much, right? look that's for something awesome. else. Yeah, that's hilarious. I didn't do the job. I did two weeks training and I bounced. Did you Did you have something else lined up though after the two weeks? Like, did somebody call you while you were into the two weeks training course? Or I can't remember, man. It was so long ago. Yeah, that is. Wild. But I, I actually, I think what I, I remember what happened was someone told me that if you work as a server, a bartender, you make tips. You don't get tips back home. Yeah. And I was like, fuck that. So I'd been working. I'd, I'd worked in hospitality before. Yeah. But as in, in the kitchen. Yeah. So I was like going around giving people my CV, like customer service experience mm-hmm. and a little kitchen stuff thinking that people and no so i just made up a whole resume <laughs> yeah of serving gigs yeah, and yeah. i ended up getting a job oh, i got a job in johnny rockets at young and dundas square I don't think it's like a 50s there. style diner okay, okay yeah, right yeah. on yeah. so a 50s style I diner, could, I could it's like a tourist name, yeah. spot right so it's all burgers and uh, yeah. jukebox and all that right and the funniest part about that job is uh anytime the song respect by aretha franklin comes on <laughs> the chefs and all the servers, we all go out to the front in the middle of the dining area and start dancing. Oh, like a choreographed bro. dance. Ooh. So you had to learn a but dance for this job. I, we had to dance and it was it was the worst because like I just 
this is pre-comedy so i was yeah. not like a confident performer yeah yeah you yeah. know like right now i would love that if someone yeah, told sure. me i had to dance sure. for a job i would i would do it no problem absolutely but back then i hated it and people were like in the ironic uh, song is respect yeah, you know i got no respect yeah. For yeah, yeah. and also everyone that worked there was like 18 years old so they were right. like full energy and just yeah. like dancing and i'm just in this line dancing being like i'm 30 i'm like what am i doing <laughs> with my life yeah, I'm just, just i got a little hat on <laughs> I got a little bow tie. I'm yeah, dancing dude. to Aretha Franklin. Yeah. <laughs> just like, <laughs> and I can't. I don't like that song anymore. Yeah. Every time I hear of that course. song, of course, yeah, you got negative like a, connotation. It's like a, you know, it's like it's like guys that, like the, the Nam War just like yeah. triggers something yeah. inside. Yeah, yeah. You know? Give them flashbacks. Like, yeah, fuck, fuck. and I stop dancing. In, yeah. in Johnny yeah. Rockets. Yeah, yeah, he can't. Yeah, he can't control himself every time he hears the song. He's like, and oh shit, people, here we go, here we go. And you know, the customers would tip like ten percent because it's all like tourists and kids from Ryerson and stuff. But they knew that if you if you asked for the dance you couldn't refuse mm-hmm. and people would come in and they'd be like can we get the dance and i'd be like Ugh. and they'd be like it's my birthday and i'm like oh <laughs> man that's oh, so yeah. right. <laughs> and i swear, if you if any of you guys are listening to this google uh young and dundas johnny rockets right dance you'll see it and i'm probably in yeah, yeah, it's so yeah, funny, yeah, yeah. well now i'm going to now I'm yeah i think i'm in one so jamie pull that video up real yeah. quick yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious man that's so oh man i love that i love that idea of you coming into this country and that's like one of your first like jobs that you had to do and you gotta use like well, this is how fucking canadians live. i had, like, I had a lot do. of really bad jobs when yeah. i first moved here I had a, I worked in Tim Hortons for half an hour as well. <laughs> oh, yikes, man. Yeah, Whoa. I got into one of those downtown food court ones, you know, in King Street. Oh, okay. And, uh, the worst. and I didn't know what Tim Hortons was, and it's just me and a bunch of, like, other immigrant people. None of them, none of them speak in English hardly. Yeah, yeah. I, I know, honestly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, there's, and they don't give you any training, and everyone's just like, what the hell's going on? It's like Monday morning, <laughs> open the shirt, there's like 100, like, Canadian people waiting for coffee, and everyone's yeah. just like, the what? fuck's going on what the hell yeah. <laughs> they're like what the hell's happening and I, I, I do I, 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 I have a joke about this in my act but like the, 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 this is true the first woman came up to me she's like what kind of Timbits do you have and I did not know yeah. I was like what are, and she's like what, <laughs> what the fuck and she's like Timbits and I'm like what are you saying I couldn't like that word just sounded so weird to me I was like <laughs> yeah. what and she was getting madder and madder yeah, and she was asking yeah. to speak to manager and I'm like I don't know who the manager is <laughs> I don't know so then she got all mad she stormed off and I was like and I said to someone, I was like, I need to go to the bathroom. But the bathroom was in that one of these, the food mall. It wasn't yeah. an actual thing. Yeah. And I walked outside. I grabbed my winter coat. And I still had the Tim Hortons visor and all that. Yeah. And I just fucking put it on. And I ran. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> love that. <laughs> yeah. He just bailed on his Tim shit. Yeah. He was like, no, nah, I'm not doing this. I can't deal with this oh, abuse. Yeah, fucking... I don't think I even lasted half yeah. an hour. I think uh, that's, yeah. that's actually hilarious. I love that. It's <laughs> yeah. so fucking All funny. the rest of the people are like, the manager just left. Yeah. What are we going to yeah. do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, that guy's our manager now. Okay, now we can use him. <laughs> it was confusing. Scapegoat. Yeah, I mean, and I, got, I also had a job working in, I got this weird like admin job in a hospital where we went around and we had to count all the computer equi- equipment that was in the hospital and so but the, the thing was the hospital staff i don't think knew that we were like this outside company mm-hmm. so i'd be walking into like cancer wards like people dying and i'd be like yeah. i'm just here to check your monitor <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the Hi. guy's like like sitting with his family yeah. or like the time i had to go in an accident and emergency Ugh. and everyone's like there's a guy with a gunshot wind and all that we're like just checking your printer <laughs> <laughs> don't mind so me weird, yeah what a bizarre <laughs> gig so many weird jobs yeah. when i first came here just because i this is like i was very like late bloomer with tech so like smartphones mm-hmm. laptops facebook and all that i didn't I don't know half this stuff. I was living downtown for years, just yeah. like hanging around all those areas, just thinking that was it until yeah. I eventually like moseyed yeah. out a little bit. But yeah. yeah, the first few years were yeah. rough. <laughs> rough. And I was telling you earlier about the time I got arrested as well. Yeah. So that was yeah. like a couple of months. In, yeah. And that was not, I don't think I'd been here six months. I got arrested twice in the same day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to hear that. Hear this story? Yeah. I want to hear I, that story. That's hilarious. Yeah. So I, so if I, where do I start? So when I was telling you about that job that I had, so um, the the call center. So I met right. this guy whose roommate was a girl from Glasgow, and he's like, "You should come hang out with this girl from Glasgow because it's my hometown, yeah, right?" Yeah, so yeah. I was like, "Cool, someone from Scotland that might have, I can I can have some friends and whatever." Yeah, so we yeah. started hanging out, uh, and then we were hanging out, me, her, and our girl for the whole summer. Then we decided to move in together into a three bedroom apartment. Like the four of you, three of us, three so, of you. So okay. it was me and uh, t- uh, the two friends. This other guy was just like a roommate, but. Um, so we moved into this place, but we had to wait a month to move in. And in that month, me and this girl from Scotland, we started dating. And we were just like, well, we can just live together. 
like the silly like you know we had to only just started dating a yeah. month in yeah yeah. I mean, what can possibly go <laughs> yeah, wrong yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what can possibly happen so the, the, the story is, oh man uh so then we started dating we're about a month in and then uh it's not going great obviously mm, obviously <laughs> yeah and then this girl she's she like she started like she was always hanging out with a bunch of these dudes right these like mm. uh what do you call these guys that are like uh, bike courier guys right you Uber, know those guys like the Uber Eats? No, this is pre-Uber Eats, but like those kind of guys are like hipster cyclist guys that you used to see. Now they're all Uber Eats guys, right? But there's yeah, like yeah. a crew of like these guys that she'd always hang out with these and she started and stopped like every night would stop coming home. And I'm like, where, where are you being? She'd be like, I was hanging out with this guy yeah. and I fell asleep on his couch yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, right? really, a really nice bike. Yeah, you got yeah so I was just like, <laughs> and, and back then I was just like, Sure, but then the, the funniest part of this, <laughs> this is quite a long story, actually. I don't know, I, yeah. But I'll tell you, it's hilarious, right? So she'd come home and she was wearing uh, different sneakers from the ones that uh, she came with. But they weren't like brand new, but yeah. they were like good quality sneakers, like like Nike or something, but like vintage style, right? Yeah. But they were women's, right? Yeah. So I was like, where did you get these? Because she's <laughs> the like, she goes, sneakers. oh, my friend, uh, I, I, this guy's name was John too. He's like, my friend John just collects vintage shoes and i was like so this guy john just collects vintage shoes and just so happens to have a pair of women's shoes in your size yeah <laughs> right? okay and I, yeah and yeah. i genuinely was like okay come on right yeah. the way this anyone, is weird yeah right? but she was like oh he, and she just started having a go at me she's like well just because you don't have any any hobbies you know yeah. like because you, know, <laughs> you don't collect shoes you fucking lose right. <laughs> so I, but part of me was like oh maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong yeah right yeah. so this happened a couple of times she kept coming home with these guys shoes right yeah so finally after about an hour a month or so uh we got drunk one night and i worked out she was cheating on me with this guy right mm. obviously and uh then just as that happened so i was we just moved into this apartment and both of us didn't really know anyone in the city. So she was going back to Scotland for a couple of weeks. And I said, like, I'll stay here for a couple of weeks. And then I'll save up some money. And then by the time you get back, I'll kind of move out. Yeah. So the day that she got back from Scotland, she came back. She comes back in with this guy that she'd been dating into the apartment. Because this guy, I guess, hadn't seen her in a couple of weeks. So he came around to drink or something. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the hell? Yeah. Jimmy? Right? I was like, Because <laughs> I was like, by that time, we hadn't dated yeah. that long. So I was like, it wasn't like a emotional investment but i was yeah. kind of like because the guy was a dick too right like this yeah. guy was a complete knob end but i was like so we started we all start drinking right yeah. and i'm and this i love that you're hanging out with them now well <laughs> we were there and i was just like all right fuck it well she comes in and i was yeah. just like i was like all right you know we start drinking and then uh it was kind of weird but i was like you know what it's fine i'm gonna move out yeah it's okay don't worry about it yeah um and then i went to the lcbo and then on the way back i, I messaged her and i was like look i don't mind this guy being here but like is it cool if he doesn't stay overnight because like my room there's three bedrooms right mm-hmm. so like mine was on top below hers yeah and i was just like yes yeah, it's, it's a bit weird right yeah of course and she didn't message me back so i get back to the apartment and then i say to her i was like did you get my text message she's like she got all mad for some reason she was just like fuck you i'll do it. i want to pay rent here yeah so you know fuck you. basically yeah, what yeah, you yeah, she yeah. goes i remember her saying this because she got very like uh, uh, antagonistic she's like what are you gonna do about it like that <laughs> she's trying to pick up no uh, she's trying to pick up that's the Glasgow charm know, baby <laughs> <laughs> so I was like so I was like I'll just speak to this guy yeah. he's a guy he obviously must It'll, know that this yeah. is uncomfortable right, right. so I, I say to him I was like look man you know because she went to the bathroom I was, I was like look man this is a weird situation like I don't mind I'm gonna leave soon you know whatever but do you mind not staying overnight tonight or going to your house because yeah. It's a bit weird. Do you not think so? And he goes, I remember him going like, I'm just going to do, this is what he said. He goes, I'm just going to do what the little lady tells me. That's what he said. That was the exact, exact words I remember. Oh, I just remember those exact words. Fuck. Really just did something to me. So, and then I think he said to me something like, well, you can do this, right? So I'm just like. <laughs> He's I, I'm now st- agging you on. So oh my they're goodness. Both, they're both standing up, right? Yeah. And I just like stand up, right? I don't get no short. I'm just wearing yeah. shorts. It's summer time, <laughs> right? Wearing glasses. I'm like, and this guy's big guy. This guy's yeah. got no teeth because he's been in so many fights and stuff yeah, like that, right? Yeah. We start getting into it. We're not fighting, but we're like pushing and shoving yeah. and we're screaming yeah. each other. And this isn't like the weekend. This is like Wednesday. Yeah. Morning, <laughs> you know? This is not like a, this is not a, like, you know, we're screaming yeah, at each yeah. other. Yeah. Um, so then you stop talking. No. It all kind of gets breaks up. So they go, they leave the apartment. Mm. I keep drinking. They come back. They go straight to bed. 
And I remember thinking to myself, okay, I was like, fuck it, I'm, I'm all drunk. And then I was walking past the, I have to walk past the bedroom. So I was walking past the bedroom. And as I was walking past the bedroom, I was like, I was going to kick the door, like, fuck you. Like that. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. mature, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hammering my, yeah. it's like, fuck you, right? But because the door was actually really thin, I put my foot right through the fucking door, right? <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> Right. It's just like here's Johnny. Here's like, That's <laughs> so here's funny, Johnny. right? So but re- remember that for later in the story because it's funny, right? Um, so I go upstairs, pass out. I, I don't know how long I passed out, but I wake up and two policemen are like, "Are you John Mostyn?" I'm like, "Yep," and yep. they fucking huckle me. Oh no! The, right? Yeah, I arrested, and I'm like, Fuck, I'm "So wait, so wait, you woke up to two policemen in your apartment, yeah. like over your bed? Mm. What? So." I think what happened was they I thought, let them in. I thought that they had um, called the police, right? But what had actually happened was I found this out later when it all went to court and stuff like that. Your so actually, what happened was um, my downstairs neighbor was this girl who got really frightened because, of course, you know, you hear fucking two dudes, especially a Scottish accent, just yeah. shouting, like, ah, 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 fucking, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Is going on? Yeah, 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 yeah. So. She, I think she called the cops because she was scared. But yeah, I sure. don't think the cops realized that I lived there. Yeah. I think, and I still don't know to this day, but I think the cops thought that I was like an ex-boyfriend who got yeah. drunk, yeah. came over to the apartment, yeah, yeah. caused yeah. shit, and passed out. Because oh, I didn't dude. know this. Because I, I, I mean, I've been in a drunk tank a few times back in Scotland, but I've never been like legit arrested. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I thought it was like the TV where you get to like you get interviewed and you, th- you know, they just yeah. throw you in. They don't yeah. tell you. In. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, when am I getting out? What's happening? So eventually, the guy. Um, the guy is in the cop. Or so the, the cop, that, the cop yeah. arrests me, and uh, he turns. He goes. I remember the cop turns around. And he goes. He goes. Women, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh oh my god, god, dude! And I was like, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm takes, so hungover. Uh, so he takes me. Uh, he takes me uh, to the police station, and he puts me in a room, and I'm just like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. He comes back in, and he goes. Uh, one of the detectives is actually from Glasgow, right? <laughs> and he wants to call you. He goes, I know, I know. Of all the things, he goes, so he, goes uh, he wants to call you. A, he flips open his little book and he goes, he wants to call you a ball bag, right? <laughs> because, and, and he's like, what's a ball bag, right? And it, the word ball bag in Scotland means like, just, it means like your testicles, like ball bag, right? Yeah. But like, it basically just means you're an idiot, right? Yeah. And he goes, what's a ball bag? And I'm, I'm like, ball bag? And I'm like, I'm a ball bag. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know? Me, me. Yeah. And, and oh, then dude. I, so I get, I get, um, I get let go, and I haven't. And they were just like, "Look, you're, you have to go." I was like, "When am I going to get to talk about this?" Right? Mm-hmm. She's like, "When you go to court." And I'm like, "It's go to court. What the yeah, fuck's yeah, going right? on?" Because I just didn't have any clue. Because yeah. I never, I never experienced this before. So they go, "Okay, you're getting released. You're on bail. So you got bail conditions. Your bail conditions are, uh, you're not allowed to go to the house mm-hmm. um, without a police escort to get your stuff." Okay. So I was like, cool. And there was a bunch of other stuff. But so where the was... fuck do you go now, though? That, that so this your... is the thing. Yeah. So they arrested me, and I got let go at, like, I think I think it was up here somewhere where the police station is, right? Because I remember being in the middle of nowhere, no money, no yeah, classes. Yeah, up, up on Eglinton. Uh, Eglin- Eglinton, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was, like, five in the morning or something right, they let right. me go. Ugh. And I'm just like, I got nowhere to be. Like, yeah. I, I was like, all my, my passport, my money, all my stuff is in that apartment. Right. So I was just like... I'm just going to go back. It's yeah, five o'clock. Yeah. No one's there. I, I, my, in my head, I was like, I wasn't going to like, I was like, they're going to be asleep. I'm just going to go pick up my stuff. Yeah. I had some money from serving and I had my passport. Oh, you went without the police escort, huh? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I know. Well, I just didn't, I had, the thing is at the time I had no other, I didn't yeah, know a lot of yeah. people. Stupidly, I should have, I mean, like the minute we broke out, I should have left, but or, yeah. or I just didn't know where it goes. Five o'clock in the morning. Sure. And I had yeah. no money. So I was just like, I have to go back. Yeah. So I go back and of course the boyfriend guys, I wait because he's going to work. Yeah. And he's like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, but I'm just, I need to get him some stuff and I'm, I'm leaving. I'm not here to start in whatever. Yeah. And, he, and he says stuff. And I can't remember what, but he has to go to work. So I go upstairs and I'm like, I might just go for a sleep for a bit. <laughs> 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 uh, you know what? Daddy got a rest. It's been a long yeah. night. I, uh, so I, and then I woke up a few hours later in a panic and I was like, shit, okay, no one's awake. So I, uh, I grabbed all my stuff, ran to, I only knew one person, ran to their house, told them what was happening or like, dude, this, this girl is fucking bad. If you go get your shit from the yeah. cops, get this done with and move on. Yeah. So I called the cops and I'm like, look, I need a police escort to get, them, get my stuff. They're like, come meet us outside the house, at whatever. So I go back, go back to the house. The cops come. They arrest me again. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> what? no, no. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm just here. To, they're like, you're under arrest, right? And they don't tell me. So because I, the, the, the boyfriend guy must have called the cops. Yeah, he let him And out. because I broke my bail conditions, 
that's a very serious offense. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right? I didn't know, uh, <laughs> I, someone told me that you can get 30 days in jail for that because uh, it's like a fuck you to the, uh-huh. the, the, the... The whole system. It's like, how dare you fucking not listen to us? So basically. this time yeah. I got arrested and it was only hours apart. Right? <laughs> yeah. and I, I just needed a fucking nap, and was, man. And like, they threw me in jail for three days. Three? Three days. Wow. Yeah. Fuck and on the third Jesus. day... So I'm in jail and I'm just in a cell just... just like I, they don't talk to me, and I'm like, yeah. am I here forever? I'm like, yeah. I don't know what the fuck. I'm free. Nobody's out. letting you know what's going on. No you don't, you don't know. get your classic Hollywood one phone That's call. That's why I thought. Like, I know yeah. what they did, but they were like, you need to call someone. But I didn't know anyone's number. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I eventually oh, called one of my friends, who's one of the flakiest people ever. But they, yeah. she was like, okay, so they called, and my I was going to court the next. Uh, so I was in there a couple of days, and I got court the next day, and then I was in the court jail, yeah. which was just full of the most criminal people I've ever seen. In my life, it was terrifying. There was a guy in the back of the cell. Like, I remember one guy, like, he goes into the, the, the bathroom area, whoever takes drugs out his ass and then does drugs and then passes out. And then there's three guys in the corner and they all, they're all they all planning their next heist, I guess. They were talking about, like, making money and hustling and all Once that. Once they get out. Yeah, and one, yeah, guy, yeah. One, guy, one guy showed me a bullet hole in his leg, right? And, I'm, and then they're asking me why I'm in there and yeah. I'm like, I kicked the door. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. And they're all... I got into a yelling match oh, with my ex-girlfriend's dude. current boyfriend. I kicked a hole in a door and now I'm in here for fucking and, three and, days. And they all, they're all just laughing. Yeah. And yeah. they're all just like, Yeah, these guys are all hardened criminals. Yeah. They're like, who the fuck is this idiot? I think like, that's why, why they didn't bother me so much because yeah. they were bothering other people. It was it was like tense, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, <laughs> Yeah, this poor sap. Like, that was leave alone. Dude. So then I, I I get out there and then I'm chained to two guys. We what? What? They're like an old school way. We were chained to two They chain other... you to other individuals yeah. in the and holy cell? And we walk shop? out into the courtroom. We're out in the court jail. Go upstairs what? with two other guys. Fuck, And then man. my friend's there. And I just see my friend. And I'm just... I remember just mouthing him like, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, my God. So then... What a sight that would have been. Because does your friend know the story of what has happened yet? Have you been able to explain it in great detail I'm not to them? Sure, if I I can't remember. I because if, if you I, haven't heard no, the full story, so. yeah, story yeah, like you're watching your friend yeah, walk through walk, their chain yeah. to other individuals, like a chain gang, and you're yeah. like, "Oh my god! Yeah. Like, oh, are man. you a murderer? Yeah. Like, yeah. what the fuck just happened, man? That would be yeah. the amount of thoughts going through that individual's head would have been crazy. Like, so this uh, is up at like Finch and Bathurst, yeah. right? which is a far that to hell, yeah, and that's up there, man. So um, the the I get bailed out, I get released, I have to go back to court. What was your bail set at? I can't remember. Like how much? It wasn't much. It, it wasn't much. Five hundred bucks or something. It wasn't though. like a ton of money. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then I, I'm not allowed. To, obviously, I'm not allowed to contact this person. Mm-hmm. I'm not allowed to go back there. I, yeah. I, I had to go back one time to pick up some stuff, but I went the, the right way this time. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, you learned your last um, name. You weren't taking a snooze. In I wasn't there. allowed to. I wasn't allowed to drink, buy booze because it was booze related. Yeah. Cause it was, and I wasn't allowed. I remember this. I wasn't allowed to own a handgun. I remember that was on the bail condition. I was just on there. I thought you couldn't in Canada anyway. So then I went to. Um, I just remember it saying fire. Yeah. But anyway, so I was living in a Parliament in Gerard at the time, right near Moss Ooh, Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to a lawyer, and because I didn't know what was going on, and the lawyer said, "Look, if you go to like a um, anger management class and an alcohol awareness mm-hmm. class, then that looks good for the court." Sure. So it's. Um, Sorry. Go oh, on. Okay. Uh, it's like your time's up. All right. <laughs> Shut up. Get out of here. Bro. So I, I went to I went to both of them in Moss Park, which is just full of the most hardened, yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. drug addicts, criminals, whatever, <laughs> who, have, who are all just there. They're not remorseful. They're just trying to reduce their jail time. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It was crazy. And I'm just like people are talking about like doing crack and drinking bottles of vodka and like how ang- like these angry guys and yeah. I'm just like what am I? Do- oh, what's going on in my life, right? Yeah. So. I go to court the first time and I thought court again was like the TV. So I turn up in a suit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, it can't hurt. Suit. I turn up in a suit and because of the, because of what it was, you go into the domestic abuse court, which is just full of people that, and you get to hear what everyone's happened to everyone. Yeah. This guy stabbed his wife and yeah. all that. And it's just full of guys who are so disrespect for the court system yeah. and police and yeah. they're just like wearing jogging pants. One guy goes up to the, the judge and he's wearing headphones and the judge tells him to take off his headphones and he's just like, no. Nah. <laughs> and he just slowly, yeah. just so disrespectful. Yeah. One guy was like, are you this guy's lawyer? Because I'm wearing a yeah. suit. Right? <laughs> was like, you do something about this. Like, no, I'm, I'm actually in the same category yeah. as them, which is great. Like, so so then I, I, speak to, I speak to a prosecutor and he's like, listen, we paid for the door. I've been to this class. I've been to, I don't want to plead guilty because I, at the time I was just about to get another visa. Mm-hmm. So I was like, He's like, well, if you pay for the door and you don't see this girl and then you come back mm-hmm. and you have to come back in our time. And I was like, cool. 
So I go back the next time. I go back the next time to court, and that lawyer wasn't there, and there was no record of me saying that. So then I have to go through this again, and this person's like, "What? There's no record of this." So I explain it, and they were like, "Cool, you can." um, Okay, we'll do that, but you have to come back again because it's just you don't do it that day. You have to just like it just keeps going on and on. Everything is prolonged. Just a fucking uh, shit show. So in this time, this is months have gone by. In this time, um. I don't. I can't remember how this happened, um, but I started dating that girl again, even though. Whoa! <laughs> what the fuck? John, what, what in the, the fuck? fuck what man? the fuck, dude? Is that is that was his go charm? I'm telling I was, you. I know, but the thing was, we. I was not on my bill. <laughs> I'm business. so stressed out right I know, now. I'm Why so would you do that? Why would right? you do that? <laughs> so I'm not allowed to see her. Because so you're, yeah, so there's still a court I've order. I've already where broke bail conditions once. Oh, but yeah. that makes it so, so hot started, that you yeah. can't yeah. see her. So, too. She, so she broke up. So, but the thing was, she broke up with this guy, and this guy was a psycho and was stalking her. But when we started dating, he was circling around. I love that you kind of got arrested as like the stalker, but yeah. in reality, you were just like a drunk idiot, just being like, yeah. and then this <laughs> no, no, guy's actually, actually the stalker. Stalk, yeah. yeah, this guy was following her around and following her every move. So we had to be really careful because he was mm-hmm. like, this guy sees me. He'll tell the cops, and I've got cops. I'm going to fucking jail this yeah, time. Probably. Yeah, 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 Fuck, exactly. Man. Yeah, and he'll and the fact that he's so obsessively in in you know infatuated with her, he is going to do everything within his power to make oh. sure you get locked oh, up. Oh yeah, like if he sees and you guys again, I was, I mean, I, was, I mean, looking back on that, I was like, I was such an idiot, right? buddy. But you were like, really playing with fire. Yeah, oh, dude, that's crazy. I know. I know. <laughs> so anyway, go back to so we're dating, and then the day I that I have that. to go back to court. Um, so this still isn't settled. How how so, far down the road so is this is, from the initial uh, incident? I guess in the, this is like almost six months, I guess. Like just okay, every couple months. of months. I and then you, you somehow magically started dating again. Yeah, I can't. Okay. I honestly, I can't remember how we got back in touch. I think we met on the street in Kensington or something again. And we just started chatting. And Kensington, like, the place of romance. I know, right? right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> place of mistakes. Yeah, well, I guess. yeah big time. Um, big time. So I, I got, uh, so I go back to court and then the lawyer's like, so you've, you've, you paid the law, uh, the landlord for the door damages. Mm-hmm. Um, you've been to these classes. You haven't you drank and blah blah blah. And you're not dating that girl. You're not seeing that girl, right? And I was like, sure, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And he goes, and then he goes, uh, okay, uh, case dismissed. Um, uh, oh, so the judge d- dismisses it. So it's dismissed. The charges no, uh, were, were withdrawn. So no, uh, no arrest on my record. No nothing. Just done. oh, sweet. That all yeah, got so wiped out. So no okay. guilty oh, charge. Good, anything, right? There you yeah. go. Um, and the funniest part about that was I go back home and the girl I've seen was in my bed. She's like, how was court? And I was like, I was charging the withdrawal. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. We're right. scot-free. Yeah, yeah. So what happens now if, so after this is all dismissed and everything, and let's say hypothetically they found you two together again, does anything, is there any repercussions since since everything was withdrawn anyways? Yeah, withdrawn, right? So yeah, yeah, so it doesn't I, matter anymore. You're you're now within your rights to date this girl and see her again and, and all this shit. Yeah, but I think... Well, I, I don't know, but I, I didn't look into it. But, uh, <laughs> but we, <laughs> obviously, yeah. But we, we, we split up pretty quick after that, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I can't remember why, but the, so so this so that was kind of the end of that chapter, which was like a year and a half of just mm-hmm. moving to Toronto. Yeah. Welcome so the, to Canada, I baby. <laughs> but, so going, going back to this, uh, do you remember I was telling you about uh, the foot thing with the, the, the sneakers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so when we were, so when I started seeing this girl again, I said to her, what was with that guy in the fucking sneakers? And he's like, oh, he had a foot fetish, right? And apparently he just had a cupboard full of women's shoes. Like vintage women's shoes, right? Just a cupboard full of them, just like a fucking creep, right? Apparently his laptop, she opened it one day, and was just like running through puddles of mud of feet and all this kind of stuff. And then she, so then she said to me, uh, so... She, said, she really knows how to choose them. So then yeah. she said to me, and I was like, "You done me for this yeah. guy?" <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! So she said, "She said what? What was with the shoes?" She said, "Well, when we had sex, she liked me wearing like uh, like Nike yeah. like trainers, right? Specific so, shoes. Yeah. Like, and then we said the only way that he could come was if he stuck his, he lived up this part here and and stuck his dick in it and like fucked her foot till he came." Right? Yes, I know, right? <laughs> yes. And I said to her, I was like, "What did you do while that was going on?" She's like, "I just lay there, I guess, just lay there." Give me your foot. Uh, uh, and I was like, uh, "You done me for this guy?" Yeah. It's just like I went through all that for a guy that fucks a fucking a foot. Uh, a guy that fucks your foot. The foot I mean, he's the foot fucker. That's <laughs> the foot fucker. That's ins- I I just you know what I mean. And let's be realistic. 
a harmless ass fetish. Like I have no actual issue well, with no, it. No but shame. like, what a crazy way to come. Yeah, to dude. Like I need to come in your shoe, and also in your, your shoe. shoe now is disgusting forever. Yeah, just keep her socks on too. Like, well, no, I don't, I don't know. But I, I always thought to myself, like, how do you bring that up in a, a dating situation? Yeah, how do you naturally be like, hey, yeah. so you know, I can't like, it, were they having sex for three hours and he wasn't coming and she was going like, what am I doing wrong? What do we need to make you come? He goes, well, actually, if you just let me have sex with your fucking foot and your shoe, <laughs> yeah. I will come immediately. Like, how does the yeah? How does the, what is the natural progression for that to happen? Oh man, I love this guy. I would have loved to been a fly on the wall just to hear the conversation. Yeah, like, dude. How do you, well, let's hear you pitch. Or even he's just like, well, so what size? puppies you working yeah. with seven and a half seven and i half? actually got well, yeah. come here check this out i got yeah. something for you and then uh come it's like his laundry yeah come shoes yeah it's so weird right but that's that's the story about yeah so i'd only been in the country less than a year when all that happened jesus <laughs> dude what a year man <laughs> what, i know and honestly for years i didn't even think about it until like i started like like i was, t- I was trying to tell the story to someone and i was like that is a wild crazy story yeah. that just was but like insane. and part of me was like why did i not go back to scotland at that point because i was almost like i wasn't yeah, having a good time i wasn't having a good time i 100 you know? would have given up and been like i'm going home well that's there was part of me that was like 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 why but some part of me was like no i need to stay here for some reason and i don't know why i was just yeah. like i'm gonna stay but like part i should have just been like fuck this country fuck yeah, all this yeah. shit and just <laughs> i 100 percent immediately like straight out the gate you almost have a criminal record yep. you know like that's that's a good way to be like, you know what? Maybe this isn't working out. For no, me. I know. <laughs> this isn't my place, man. This isn't for, this this country isn't for me. Yeah. You know, like that's I I've never been so stressed. <laughs> yeah, that was a tense one, man. Living vicari- Oof, living sweat. vicariously through you. I was like, man, sweat. I was like, I can't I can't handle this guy's life right now. This is why are you doing this to yourself? Why the moment you said you went and fell asleep too, when you, they uh. were like, Hey, bring a cop escort and you didn't, I was like, first of all, oh, come on, John. Oh, get, yeah. I, man. I felt like I was watching like a fucking show actually. Yeah. I was like in my head I'm picturing it, I was like, Okay, maybe he'll get in there and get out and everything will be okay. Obviously that wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> 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 I felt tired, I took a nap and I was like, No, please, like just go, just leave. Yeah, the funniest dude, part that's I, so I, I always remember this as well. Like the, the the night that that happened during the day, I remember watching Silence of the Lambs on TV. And for some reason, that always sticks in my mind. It's so funny watching yeah, Silence of the Lambs, yeah. and then later on that night, I was in jail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and knowing that guy had a foot fetish too, yeah. when I kicked the door in with my bare foot, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he must have thought a fucking Santa Claus is coming. Oh yeah, to me. he for sure <laughs> came. <laughs> That's so hot. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, I was like, hey, can you call up John again? Just yeah. kick our door real quick. <laughs> <laughs> So what was jail like? What was, what was jail like? Did you have like a, a cellmate? Just, Were you just no, in a it huge? Just myself. It was just myself. Uh, oh, okay. And then until I went to court, then it was a bunch of people. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it wasn't fun. It was just like, also, it's just like I was so hungover mm-hmm. for oh, days. You know, yeah. like one of those hangovers where you just don't go you're away. just hungover for and they don't they don't give like I didn't get fed for hours, and I remember the only thing that they remember giving me to eat was pizza pockets. Which I've never been able to eat since. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, I just yeah. remember this like cold, like glucosey drink, and then a bunch of pizza pockets. Yeah, and then they never fed me ever again. They don't talk to Fuck. you, or nothing. You're just in a cell, and there's no time. There's no sky. There's no nuts. So you don't know what time it is. Yeah, you don't have a. Clue. And then they're like, they, they kept moving me around to different places. I was like, in like a what they what they call me a paddy wagon. So you call that like the the police van. Oh, oh yeah, 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 and you're just in there, and it's like this. Type. So you're going from jail to jail. Yeah, you I was going to one. I went cell. to the the police holding station to then somewhere yeah. else. Then, I, which I still to this day have no fucking idea mm-hmm. because no one talks to you. Even people that were in jail, they don't. No one's talking to you. Yeah, right. You know what I mean, yeah. and I didn't want to talk to him. I was fucking scared. You know what I mean? And then, then I was in the court jail. Right. Like where everyone's waiting to get heard. And, rooms, yeah. and then they were like, if your guy for bail doesn't show up, you then you're in for another whatever. And I'm mm-hmm. like. Yeah. You know I mean? so but, you didn't so you didn't have like where you were you just literally moved from cell to cell there was yeah, no wasn't, like yeah. there was no time to no. yourself to do anything no i wasn't relatively. yeah so i was basically like and i got arrested that day and that whole day then at night time and this happened moved, for three then days. they moved me to so they moved me to another place and i was in one cell almost the whole day yeah and then the next day they took me to court so it wasn't like i guess all so. right right yeah crazy though yeah it's yeah. so it, it's just like looking back on that it feels like someone else did it do you know what I mean mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I, I especially with those distant memories of because you're you're now sober, yeah, right? One hundred percent. So with those distant memories of just like having those very thank God heavily, I'm sober. <laughs> just, yeah, uh, and, and honestly, a lot of like you've, you've been relatively somewhat inspirational to me as well to try and figure yeah. that. I'm I'm very happy to watch you do that because uh, I 
I mean, I didn't know you for that long, but I remember I remember Drunken John, and there was definitely some <laughs> some some anger man in I there. Don't, was, I don't <laughs> remember. Well, that's the thing too. Yeah. When, it, when it's so far away, and when you're so fucked up, those, those I I 100 relate to that. Where like those those memories don't even feel real. You're like, wait, did that yeah. happen, or was that like a fucking scene that I saw? It, like, it does feel like that sometimes because when you look at especially the first four or five years living here were yeah. crazy because I was mm-hmm. I was drinking, I was doing a lot of drugs, and I was hanging out with like toxic yeah. people of for the course, whole yeah. time. Yeah. But when I look back on it, I'm like who the fuck was this guy and like yeah. what was going on it, was, it yeah. feels like a because my life is so different now so vastly different yeah and exactly who was this individual like yeah you just have memories of certain people that you're like i can't believe that we even had anything in common like why would we have been around each other in any social yeah. circle in any and social you, scenario every so often you'll meet someone from those days and you're just like you meet them on the street and you're just like yeah. uh, hi, or you're yeah. like just yeah. <laughs> you're like yeah you don't know what to say you don't know what to do you're like Fuck. but then there's people yeah those people i see those people around and they're still at it and i'm just like thank yeah. i'm so blessed it just 100%. like just actually going to humber was the, probably the the thing that stopped that because you know you meet cool people who are creative and doing mm-hmm. comedy and don't are not like toxic idiots yeah. do you know i mean it was just like yeah. people are actually trying to do stuff and it's trying to fun. do the things that you do you share a common it's dream encouraging common all the teachers yeah. were encouraging i mean mm-hmm. all you guys and i was just yeah. like oh i don't need to i thought all my life i had to be like this crazy fucking fucked up guy but yeah. then i was like oh these people accept me and it's a community and i don't need yeah. to Big time. Be a fuck up anymore. Yeah. So that's yeah, yeah. why I was like, well, if I keep drinking, I'm going to ruin all this. Yeah. So actually going to Humber, people shit on it sometimes and like got me sober and it yeah. changed my life. Big time. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that's what I say to anybody. Like, uh, we've had a couple of times, obviously, talking on the podcast about our Humber experiences. I have nothing but good things to say about Humber. I mean, oh, like, 100%. there's definitely some classes or some things that I feel, or, you know, some teachers that I feel could have gotten cut, but it was like, it, all, ultimately, it was a great experience. I got to meet um, so many wonderful people and it was like, I, and they gave me uh, they gave me opportunities that I would have never had in any other situation, you know, yeah. like uh, just even talking about the Yuck Yuck Showcase. Are you kidding me? I would have never been able to perform in front of over. fucking 400 yeah. people like that. That was beautiful. Yeah. Having a whole, even though none of us were really that good yet, it, yeah. there were some of us that were better than others, obviously, but there was like having that whole room of people like just so ready to laugh at your every word. Everything yeah. that you said, no matter what you did, you crushed. Like you had to really, really fucking eat shit to bomb that show. And then uh, afterwards, you realize that that doesn't happen all the of time. Of course, that and, happens and, uh, almost never. <laughs> you never get to play in front of three hundred yeah. people ever again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that, that, and that's what I mean. I was like that. That that's why it was kind of beautiful to me to be like, I I can't believe I had that opportunity to do that. That's so cool. Like, how many comedians do you know that, as good as they are, have never played a crowd like that? You know. Yeah. You know. But yeah, it definitely, it. it definitely is good for just, and also like for that, for me, I was like, I was just like a drunk person for most mm-hmm. of my life. So I'd never like acted or mm-hmm. done improv or sketch. I'd done a little comedy, like right. once every couple of months I'd do an open mic or whatever, but like yeah. I'd never been a performer yeah. and I'd never been confident. I had low like self-esteem and sure. anxiety and all that. And because of Humber, that was the first stepping stone to becoming all of those things yeah. and realizing I didn't need to drink. Yeah. Or do drugs or party to be that guy. Sure. So, yeah. And no, uh, yeah. And ever since then, I haven't been arrested. So uh, Two yeah, thumbs up so, for Humber, eh? Yeah, Big Humber. shout out to Mr. Clark. Yeah, this podcast is sponsored by the <laughs> Humber Sponsored Comedy by Humber Comedy. Comedy. Uh, program. <laughs> yeah, but no, but honestly, man, it, 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 it was a really great program. And it had a lot of lot of awesome things. And I'm glad that uh, you're <laughs> staying on the right side of the tracks these yeah, days. Because yeah, <laughs> yeah. that, that story was the worst. Yeah, dude. Right? Oh, yeah. man, imagine you could st- if you're drinking so you could just be with her right now. 100%. Oh. Man, 100%. Or maybe right. you'd be in a throuple with that yeah. other dude. With that other dude. With he'd that, be uh, fucking your feet. Yeah, he'll be coming in your <laughs> shoes. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, would I be into it? Yes, you would. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, if you were still not? drunk and on drugs, you're <laughs> unless you're real ticklish. Well, that's I'm pretty lonely. Yeah, I yeah. mean, like, I, someone wants to fuck my foot. <laughs> I'm, I'm, just like... I'm not going to discriminate. <laughs> I, uh, well, I, I mean, what do you what do you think? Yeah, do we got like uh, scumbag scoundrel? Do you're... we got any scumbags or scoundrels in here? Well, obviously that foot fucker's a bit of a scumbag. Yeah, that guy's a weird. Well, yeah. I mean, and that girl any... too. She's a uh, she's yeah. crazy. But I, I think I think your guys's energy at the time probably matched up. Yeah, being, like, oh, crazy yeah. especially drunk, being two like... people who both moved from the same place. Same Obviously, area. Yeah. Some I, I, I tell you what there. happened was, uh, I think a couple of years ago, she still kept in touch with our friend, mm-hmm. and then she came back to Toronto because she moved to America, and she came back, and then my friend was like, "You should meet her, go hang out." And I was part of me was like very curious because mm-hmm. I'd been like three, I think three years sober, my yeah. life changed, whatever. Yeah. And I met her, and I was just like. And she was like, oh, hey, how you doing? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I missed you sort of thing. And I'm like, yeah. do you not remember the yeah. thing? <laughs> do you not remember yeah. our... Yeah. You almost I, fucked I, up my I, life. I, I'm, I swear to God, she was like, do you not remember? I was like, I told her, I was like, do you not remember the time that happened? She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, do you know how... <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm but, so distraught. But, but, the thing, but so, so the thing I remember, was like, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, I'm such a different person. Yeah. I realized that I was like, I would have never hung out with someone like that. Mm-hmm. You know, because not even just because she's not a bad person, right? Mm-hmm. Just like her energies are just. But at the time, I was just like, just, just lonely in a country and a drunk and a fucking just well, looking looking to get up to mischief you know what i mean yeah and it also comes back to that lack of confidence too like that you that you clearly didn't have at that point you kind of like am i even worthy of having these friends that i should do i get to pick and choose who my friends are or do i just like let people that enter my life just be a part of that life yeah. now you know like you get to be pickier when you start feeling a little bit better about yourself right because like at those those times i imagine that wasn't the case no i uh but yeah i mean the foot fucker kind of a scumbag anybody that's a stalker like you know like we yeah, you know, we all we have we all made and done stupid shit in our lives, but I mean like that. Come on, man! Don't be following <laughs> let it go. women around. Don't let don't follow anybody around. Why are yeah, you doing that? Yeah. For months after that, actually, uh, he, he, I would see him on the street. He'd live in the same area, and he'd follow me around on his bike. He'd follow you around. Yeah, sometimes because I think he was a a handyman. Or something. Sometimes I'd I'd, yeah. see, I'd see him. Right. I'd <laughs> He's God, more of a footy man. <laughs> <I don't>. Oh, <laughs> pow, pow, pow. crushing! But he would like he would like we'd be like it, like walking along the street and then i kind of like feel someone there and he, he wouldn't he wouldn't say anything to me he was such a fucking weird guy and he'd mm. like he'd be like swinging a hammer <laughs> <laughs> he's like trying to threaten you with a hammer yeah. or sometimes i'd be at the dufferin mall and i'd be like walking and he'd be I, he'd see me because i think we must have lived you in the were... same area and he'd just like circle around me on his bike and i'm just like going to fuck off Do you know what i mean well, i'm just like especially because he's like... on a bike too it's hard to be intimidated by yeah. a man on a on a, his trike this, this guy was on in his 40s too I yeah of like, everything geez. to be riding to try and be intimidating he's like your bike i could kick out the tire and you'd be fucked ring, like ring. yeah <laughs> bing, yeah. bing, bing, bing. um <laughs> what did you ever say anything to him what like how close no. was he circling to you or was he, was he like doing like, large it like, areas it was just like you could see he was there but he yeah. wasn't like close by and i was just like you know what? I'm not gonna get. You know, he's just, keeping I some keep, distance. Yeah, and then he'd eventually just go away. But like, yeah, he was definitely, a, he was definitely a scummy. Person, yeah, and he but, was. Uh, yeah, he was definitely trying to play mind games on you, like try and threaten yeah. you and make you feel intimidated. Yeah, and... was, yeah, um, he was a definitely scumbag. I mean, I was. I mean, I, 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 I say I was a bit of a scumbag back then. I wasn't like a bad person per se, but I was a bad drunk, yeah. you know, and getting myself in a bad situation. Sure. So I guess. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't know if I was a skin. It's, it's it's a tough. It's definitely. A t- I mean, like like I say, I really relate to that because, like, I find like especially when you're really drunk and if you're doing drugs, it makes you the worst possible version of yourself. That's well, that's basically yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, and because if you're like, if your mental health isn't good and you're doing mm-hmm. drinking and drugs, and yeah. like, you're well, you, first of all, you stop caring about all repercussions and who you are and what you, like all yeah, that shit, care. and then you just go all the way in, and then yeah. you go like, why did I do that? <laughs> yeah, and then you just get up to you end up in crazy situations. And, and you get like, arrested twice in the same day. And I, I, I'm like next, actually, I think it's next week or something. I'll be uh, four years sober and I haven't had any interesting stories happen to me in those four years. Mm-hmm. And I'm very, if I don't ever have another interesting story yeah. in my life, I'm pretty happy. Yeah, honestly, like, that's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's cool. What's, what's the fuck is the point? Cause those interest, those interesting stories are always so fucking stressful to like, just bring up and think about and be like, yeah, that. Cause I've been ever, ever that getting me. to that situation. Yeah. yeah. No. Of course not. No. Like, why would you? You would never. I I'm trying my best to avoid those situations too. And then, any, like, yeah. any situation that I have ever been in has always been some uh, drink, drugs, or some fucked up thing, right? Yeah. It's like now I'm sober. I'm just like I don't get into situations. Yeah. Do you yeah. There's no. Well, first of all, you're not staying up past two a.m., which is a huge thing. Like yeah. the, those. La- it's always that late, late night, early morning where really fucking shitty shit happens. <laughs> yeah. And if you're going to bed at a normal time because you're not drinking, you're not partying, then and almost inevitably, statistically speaking, you're not going to be find yourself in those spots. You yeah. know, like it's true. That's the smart. Just go to bed. Yeah. That's like the only advice I could ever <laughs> give or think to I myself. Know, I go to bed like ten o'clock go to bed. now, and I'm just like, absolutely. That's beautiful. Bed at ten, and I'm like, you know, when I first stopped drinking, I was always like. Oh, what did I miss last night? Because I'm always like, thinking I'm missing stuff, and I'm like, mm. all you miss between like the hours of like eleven to bar closing is a bunch of people not remembering what they're doing. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, you don't miss anything. Yeah, like, you're nothing being missed. Do you of mean? course not. No, there's Apart nothing. Sleep, all this getting missed. You're, you're just missing fucking. But it's that desperate, lonely human trait, yes. and and when when the booze and the drugs are uh, involved, you really feel that exponential. It's magnified that feeling of being like, oh, I'm so lonely, and I'm so like, I just need, I, I need to be around somebody, and I don't care what even. Because I remember those late night conversations. You're having conversations with people, and neither of you are knowing what you're saying, or you oh, don't remember anything. You're just like your one eyes falling asleep, and you're kind of yeah, just like, saying words, but just not, keep yeah, it up, like, <laughs> keep 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 up, keep up. Like it's like, why am I even here? Like yeah. let's just fuck can go home and stop killing ourselves slowly. and now and now every time i go to sleep and if there's like a party happening or i'm not i don't care anymore but like when i first got to it was like there's a party happening or like you're at comedy bar and everyone's had a good time 
And I go home and I'm like, fuck, I'm going home, fucking sober, fucking yeah. loser. And yeah. every time I wake up in the morning, I'm like, I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah, I feel <laughs> so great. Yeah. I'm up, I'm having breakfast. Yeah. I talk to my friends, they're like, yeah. oh, that got messy. And I'm like, fuck yeah. you, yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> no doubt yeah. it got messy. They're like, I spent 400 bucks on yeah. coke. You know, you're yeah, like, that's yeah. always the worst thing, too. It'd be like, where'd my fucking money go? Oh, Taxis, yeah. Taxis, coke, <laughs> fucking like, more booze, yeah. but spending. You know, like the booze delivery guy and all. Oh, Jesus. That Coke knows too. What that a Coke fucking knows, yeah. nightmare that every time the next day you're like, why? A couple of days later you're at work and you snort one back. You're like, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Oh, I was thick. fucked up again. Yeah, I got the <laughs> fucking numb throat. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, like, I think I think we can agree here, Eddie. We got ourselves a scoundrel. You're I mean, a scoundrel, I mean, my friend. Yeah, no, that's... Okay. And I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're sober. I'm glad you're here Thank to tell you. us this yeah. story, Thank man. You. Yeah. That was a uh, yeah. I, I was sweating telling yeah. that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I was sweating. Man. We all <laughs> were, dude. The whole time, I'm like, stop, John. Stop doing this. What are you doing? Stop, stop this. I, I I I don't tell that story a lot just because I'm like, I hope I incriminate myself somehow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, no, still the old. Uh, Everything was alleged. Yeah. No, yeah. Free, yeah. Baby. Yeah. allegedly I did all this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Allegedly that was my up. life. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's uh, oh, fuck, it's it's a weird story to tell. Yeah. But I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to make it into like a stand up bit because sure. it's just like it's a funny thing. But it's also like, but it's also not that funny because it was also horrible. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't like a funny. Oh, I got arrested for being an idiot. I was like that, that could have been worse. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But for sure. I just kind of blanked out, but now I'm like, okay, let's try and make light yeah. of the situation because, yeah. you know, it's in the past and, you know, it's, sure. it's a good indicator of like where I was when I first moved mm-hmm. here and what where I'm like now, now, you know, business owner, responsible, Absolutely, sober at, at the Pylander on Instagram. Yeah, no, and, just, and, and, yeah <laughs> Pylander on Instagram. <laughs> Pylander. I mean, you could always, you know, I, and you could always just like obsess about the shitty things that happened to you or the shitty things that you did, but it's like at the end of the day, it's like might as well just try and make it funny then, especially well, if you're doing comedy, like and, trying to put a twist on it. But that's when sometimes when I, uh, you know, because sometimes when I look back on stuff, instead of feeling weird about it, mm-hmm. I go, look how much you've grown yeah. since then. Absolutely. You know, because yeah. as I say, next week, I think it's next week and four years sober, and I looked at where I was four years ago now, to like now and i'm like mm-hmm. and in that and within that period i'm like i don't think i did or achieved a lot but then i listed it the other day and i was like well i've done tons i've yeah. I've, had, I've changed completely and when people are always like oh you can't change or you know blah blah i was like that's bullshit yeah because absolutely. i was on the road to fucking ruin yeah i really was yeah like if i kept going the way i would probably either be dead in hospital jail yeah back in scotland yeah working in bell call center you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the worst out yeah, of all know, of them right? yeah. tim hortons yeah. you know yeah. What yeah. I mean? yeah your 30 minute shift at tim hortons is still so but it just is a, it's like an interesting thing to see where you can just yeah. you can be a fuck up yeah and you can change it around yeah it's and not I'm, too late and it's never too late because yeah. i was 36 when i stopped drinking yeah. i'm 40 next month yeah you know i mean so it's like and i i saw pictures of me where recently when i was in that age and i looked at me now and i was like how do i look older then yeah i know yeah you know I mean? <laughs> big time but that's another thing it's like yeah. i'm healthier than i've ever been it's like but back yeah. then i looked like death like i yeah. literally yeah. looked like death so even even in a month i remember like i stopped drinking for a month there for a while you and i had talked yeah. a, a bit and my girlfriend even mentioned being like you you look already much healthier like your cheeky there's more your your face yeah. is healthier looking and i was like fuck like maybe i gotta just completely cut it i'm you know it still haven't yet but you know ideally yeah, yeah, one yeah. day you know it's, well it's, you know it's once you get arrested like, twice in one day yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that definitely changes everything around um i think that's kind of brings us to the end of the episode though john i, I really appreciate you coming on man. oh yeah that was, that was so very much. wonderful yeah, man, incredible so story yeah, dude yeah, that was awesome. that was really yeah, you, yeah. you have a very interesting fascinating life you're, you're always a good time to talk to and somebody that you know helps kind of inspire me as well so thanks a lot for coming on buddy Thank and you. laugh uh, at this man's jokes yeah the pylander john austin comedy what's your instagram the austin comedy and uh the pylander Lander for pies yeah and if you're in toronto tall boys every sunday night on the patio heady patio stand-up comedy check it yeah. out yeah yeah absolutely or, uh, check yeah. it out very funny individual very very good thank you so much for coming there on. we go have a good one buddy yeah.